Well, here I am back at the world's worst movie theater, and uh, I see that now there's a homeless person now sitting in the movie theater, so I guess I gotta be quiet while he's in there. Or, I don't know, I've been talking loud for the most part since I got in there, but um, he doesn't seem to mind it, just as long as I don't bother him. So, um, yeah, it's okay, buddy, don't worry about it, I won't let you, I won't bother you in whatever the hell you're doing up there, so... um. Anyway, let's continue on with the list of the worst movies I've ever seen. The 30 worst films I've ever seen. We talked about uh, Blues Brothers 2000 as my number 30 worst movie of all time. And uh, hey, John Landis, good to see you again, attaching yourself to terrible comedy sequels. Number 29 on my list of my worst movies of all time takes one of the definitive 80s comedies and just ruins it where everything that made that first movie such a classic to begin with just went away with Beverly Hills Cop 3. Beverly Hills Cop 3 is a 1994 uh, threequel starring Eddie Murphy once again as Axel Foley, who once again returns to Beverly Hills, California, to stop a gang of counterfeiters who are responsible for the death of his boss. Foley teams up with his best friend Billy Rosewood, once again played by George Reinhold, as investigation leads him to an amusement park known as Wonderworld. The film features a number of different cameos from well-known film personalities such as Robert B. Sherman, Arthur Hiller, John Singleton, Joe Dante, special effects legend Ray Harryhausen, and George Lucas as a ride patron. And uh, poor Axel Foley, man. After a great first movie and a not quite as good but still enjoyable sequel, the third movie in the Beverly Hills Cop series really takes the series downhill from where it was before. It's not like there's bad... There's a this was a bad idea altogether. There's a lot of potential here. Because remember, Eddie Murphy worked with John Landis on two of his greatest comedies, Trading Places and Coming to America. The trailer has good funny moments. They even brought back a lot of the older characters from the last couple of films. The recently passed away Alan, Alan Young, who shows up in this movie as a central character. You know, Scrooge McDuck is in this movie. How do you possibly go wrong? Well, there's a lot of things. One, the film came out. Two... What we got was a lot of unfunny jokes. Three, poorly done action sequences. Four, a lot of continuity errors and issues. Like, if you watch the the Ferris wheel scene, you see exactly what I'm talking about. Keep, in, keep your eye on the clouds in there. One scene, there'll be clouds. One scene, there won't be clouds. Another scene, there'll be clouds. Another scene, there won't be clouds. Like, clouds, I know, can move around, but they, can, they at least stay in one single spot in one particular... If one single event is happening, and it just changed at a random, but... That happens a lot during that particular scene, and an ending that has easily one of the stupidest scenes I have ever, stupidest ways to end a movie on, and that is turning Axel Foley into a Fox character. Like, this is literally how the movie ends, with one of the stupidest things I have ever seen. They take Axel Foley, one of the definitive characters of his time and just postify him into a cartoon fox. Like, I really hate this movie so much. And I'm glad to say that now, you know, Eddie Murphy has been able to rejuvenate the franchise with Beverly Hills Cop Axel F coming out recently, which has completely brought the series back on track again. I mean, it's really got me excited to see what would happen if they eventually decide to do another se to do a sequel for this, which, I mean, that, well, that probably will, but Beverly Hills Cop Axel F is really the third Beverly Hills Cop movie that we should have gotten. You know, say what you will about Eddie Murphy's movies in the later part of his career, like Norbit and Meet Dave, A Thousand Words, but it's still Eddie Murphy. The guy can be really funny when he's given the right material to do, and there has to be someone out, there, somebody out there who understands why Beverly Hills Cop is such a great movie and can give us that good sequel the franchise deserves, which we got in Axel F. Where Beverly Hills Cop 3 fails compared to what the first two movies did, was that, much like with Blues Brothers 2000, you really got the sense that they were trying to sell this movie more to the younger audiences than the adults that made the original film such the classics that they were. Yes, there still is a lot of R, there's still an R rating to this movie, and yeah, there are more bloodier action sequences in this, and there's just a, and yeah, a surprising amount of them, surprisingly, but, um, you basically had something on a PG-13 level, and you just cannot do that with Beverly Hills Cop. Nine times out of ten, when you make a PG-13 sequel or remake to an R-rated film, it does not work. 
You get one of them every once in a while. I just talked about one recently on Time About the Movies, The Longest Yard. Be Cool was another one we just talked about on there recently. But um, Beverly Hills Cop 3 failed because the people working on this, even Eddie Murphy, felt like they didn't want to do it at all. There were even reports when Eddie Murphy did this that he was in a state of depression when he decided to take on the project. He's since come out publicly to say that the third film was atrocious and such a disgrace that the character was kind of banished for a while in Hollywood. He said that he felt the third film did not reveal enough of the edginess and the, of Axel that was presented in the first two films. And he wanted to try to get another movie made for many, many years so he could return to the edgy qualities of the character when he reprises the role the next time. And this is not the first time, that, and Axel F would not be the first time he tries to do that. We also had the CBS TV series, which we had a little bit of the pilot reveal this year, which, yeah, you could tell that didn't work as well because the whole idea, I think, was that Eddie, Murphy was, Eddie Murphy's character, I think, was supposed to be a recurring character on the show, but he didn't want to do the TV show. Like, there was a whole idea that, with that show in particular, if I remember what it was correctly, that Eddie Murphy's cameo in the TV series was supposed to be a one-time thing, but they wanted him to keep coming back onto the show more and more. And, um, but because, but it's funny, because even with that, his cameo in there actually doomed the show's chances of getting made, because the whole thing was that, you know, the whole thing was that, um, like they showed this, te they showed this test pilot to people, and Eddie Murphy had said I was going to be in the pilot, and they thought of I should be recurring. I'm not going to do Beverly Hills Cop on TV. I remember when they tested it, they had this little knob that you turn if you'd like it or don't like it. So when Axel shows up in the pilot, some people turn the knob so much they broke it. So the network decided if he isn't recurring, this isn't going to happen. So it ended up not happening. Which he's gone on to reiterate the statement that's saying that the reason they didn't pick up the show because they thought he was going to be in the show because the lead was his son. And you're going to pop in every now and then. And, he was, and Eddie Murphy was just like, I ain't popping in shit. Well, we ain't making a TV show. I was in the pilot, but they wanted me to be there every week. The pilot was really good. It turned to test it where they, where they had these knobs turned if you like it. And whenever I came on screen, Axel Foley would come, would come on the screen. They turned it so it literally broke the knobs of the thing. It was like, damn, they're breaking knobs. Like... Like, it really, like, it's weird. Like, they've, like, you would think that bringing Eddie Murphy back for a one time thing, I mean, if it was, if it was just going to be a one time thing, I think the show probably would have done well, but they wanted him to be on there every single week. And Eddie Murphy, I don't think Eddie, I get why Eddie Murphy's coming from. I like, I don't think he wanted to be on a recurring television show like that because if he shows up for a one time cameo, that's fine and all, but. We saw with Lethal Weapon how well that worked, and they had none of the characters from the original movie, uh, the actors from the original movie in that, and that actually was a really good show for a couple of years. So I got why Eddie Murphy was coming from here, and that's why it took a while for a Beverly Hills Cop movie to finally get made and to finally give us the proper Betty, Beverly Hills Cop 3 that we rightfully deserved. But, you know, this movie, Beverly Hills Cop 3, getting back to the topic at hand, it really is the one, the we, the black sheep of the entire series. It lacks the comedy, it lacks the heart, it lacks the action, it lacks the good storytelling, it lacks Eddie Murphy's wit and edge to the character. It's a film that you felt like this was the begin. This was really the beginning of the end of John Landis's uh, like ability because he never made another really good movie after this movie came out. I mean, this was a movie where his career really took a nosedive, and he did stuff like The Stupids, which was a terrible movie. This felt like a threequel that felt like nothing more than a cash grab. They waited way too long to make this film because this project was also in development hell for a number of years. There was even a, a script where he was going to team up with John Cleese and it was going to take place in London, which completely takes the whole concept of Beverly Hills out of that altogether. It's just a bad movie. It sucks, plain and simple, and luckily they have redeemed it with Axel F., which you should watch. It's on Netflix. It's worth a watch. But Beverly Hills Cop 3 is my 29th worst movie of all time. So with that said, that's going to wrap this one up. And if you want to go ahead and check out what I had to say about the last John Landis film that's what was on this list, Blues Brothers 2000, go ahead and check out the video, check out the playlist as well. I'm getting out of here because now it's starting to smell like garbage right now and something even worse. So uh, I'll be back next week, I think. <laughs>